Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 4 of the 1974 RCA AS 12080 black and white 12 inch solid state television. Have you watched parts 2 and 3? We dealt with the power supply issues and vertical sweep issues. Uh, but now we've got some horizontal nonlinearity. It's kind of squished at the right hand side. So we're going to see if we can't fix that one. And then hopefully this one will be done. So here's our horizontal drive. And you can see that they have a lot of these uh, ferrite beads that help keep uh, regeneration and stuff from showing up. But you've got a, a sync pulse inputs here, phase detection from the feedback, horizontal multi, which I'm guessing is an oscillator stage. they got two of those. And then we've got our horizontal driver which then goes to our horizontal output. Uh, so a nonlinearity is, I, somebody mentioned in one of the videos uh, that nonlinearity is due to a lack of drive because the beam has to sweep from left to right and so if it runs out of energy by the time it gets to the right hand side then it's definitely a, a drive issue. And given what we've seen from all these resistors that have gone way up in value uh, and the circuit tends to improve a little bit as the longer it's been on. I kind of wonder uh, if we've got more drifted high resistors. There's really only one electrolytic in the circuit here, and that's this uh, C7, which looks like it's uh, basically a B boost capacitor. That's all it is B filter or something like that. Anyways, now we've got this thermistor here. 1000 ohms cold. So yeah, let's uh let's get the board yanked out and start checking stuff. And the board in question is this little dude down here, which is not the easiest to get to cuz I've got the neck of the CRT in the way and some other stuff, so I'm going to need two hands for this and then uh I'm going to pop this guy out. So this one wasn't easy to get out, but here we are. And we're just going to start checking resistors and things since these seem to have this problem with the components drifting high. And I'm just going to put a blue dot on each one that I find that's defective and then we'll replace them. Uh, so here, like this is supposed to be a 10K. 11.8, so right off the bat it's more than 11.8% off. And then we come over here, this should be a 270K. And that's going way up. Let's reverse polarity here real quick, make sure it's just not holding the charge. Hard to tell. I may have to lick, lift the uh, leg on that one and test it. 27k measuring 34, 150k, that one's continuing to rise, but you get the idea here, it's just, whatever company RCA used for these resistors is just garbage, there's another 27k, we're up to 30 on that one. And let's see here. Here's another 150K. Hard to tell because that one's like. Yeah, and there's capacitors here charging too, so. I'm going to have to lift the leg on that one. I'm putting a fatter stripe on the ones that I got to lift. So, like this one, I need to put a fatter stripe on versus the dot. And let's see, this should be a 6.8K, what is it? Or no? Yeah, that should be 6.8. Blue, gray, red. And it's measuring 8.2. Both directions. Here's another one next to it. Does this measure the same? 8.4. 
Yeah, see, from what I understand, gray is eight, blue is six, so I need to look at the schematic. There's something wrong there. And here's another 10K. That one's actually okay. Amazing. This one's a 39K, 41. That, yeah, that's not enough. That's not 10% out yet, so we'll leave that one be. And then we have this here, which looks like a 220 ohm. That measures 250. Ooh. And then here's a 470. And the phone's going to ring again. That's pretty dang close. Let me get the phone here. And back to 47K, 53 and rising. So all of these are like, ugh. Just garbage. Driftomatic. So, out of curiosity, I'm going to lift the legs of a couple of these guys here that just measured very wrong uh, and see what they measure out of circuit. Because sometimes your meter is putting a voltage into the circuit. And that's changing the resistance of the circuit, so you can't really gauge it. I mean, if it just settles on something, that's fine. But if it looks like it's charging a capacitor, you need to pull one leg up and take a look at it. So let's do that. Because that should be a 68, 6.8K. It's measuring 8.4K. Yeah, see, that, that isn't right. All right, so let me go get a real 6.8K, and, and we'll look at the difference. Yeah, so 6.8K, same, blue-gray, and it's got two brown stripes on the new one. That would be, you know, 10 times 2 instead of a single red stripe. But it's the same thing. It's a 6.8K, and if I hang my meter across it, that's 6.8K. So... These two are definitely these these have to go because obviously they're they're measuring opposite of what they should be. They uh, read 6.8k and they read 8.4k, uh, so those got to come out. And then there was another one here that kept charging. I think that was this 150k here. Let's pull the leg up on this guy. Make sure I got the right one. Yes, I do. All right. And we'll check him. It's just amazing how much of this has drifted. And that's probably why the people trashed the set. is because they couldn't use it. Everything was just so far out of whack. So that's okay. That's... That 150K is 155. That can just stay in there. I don't, that's not a problem. Let's solder that back down before I forget it's there. Okay, and then there was one more here that was questionable that I drew a big fat line on. Actually, I think there was two. There was this other 150K, and then there was this 270. So let's look at the 270 here and see what he pops out as. drop things these rarely ever go bad I've seen maybe once or twice uh, let's see now see that's still wrong 270 K and it's measuring over 308 so that one's got to go and then this other 150 K over here this looks like R9 
It's funny how some values are fine and others are just off the charts. What a pain, huh? Basically, I'm just stuck replacing a bunch of resistors. Bend this over a bit. We'll see, that's wrong. So that 150K there is 180. So basically, what I'm going to have to do is completely repopulate this board. This board is just replete with uh, bad resistors. Can't even really say anything about the circuit until all these out of tolerance components are replaced. I find that weird that we've got a, a Japanese, I don't know if you can see it there, we've got a Japanese style package. This is package that Hitachi would have used. But over here we've got Motorola. It doesn't look like it's been replaced. The soldering still looks old. So, weird ADHD uh, tangents. All right. So, basically, the cure here is uh, we're going to replace shit, just about everything. I might as well just. I think there was only like two or three that weren't out of tolerance. So, yeah, I'm going to do that and then uh, replace the little. This isn't a boost cap. That's only 50 volts. Okay, well, anyways, new resistors and new cap time, and then we'll pop this thing back in, and uh, we'll see what it does after that. All right, so here it is. I pretty much repopulated everything except for four resistors, which were still spot on, so I left those alone. But as you can see, there are our culprits that were all 15, 20% off. Did some light resoldering too. So let's pop this back in and see if we have fixed our linearity problem. All right, well, here goes nothing. So you see we got some horizontal issues there. Look at that. All right, well, let's not take that off anymore. Let's go back and check our work. So I did a quick once over and checked all my work and check the component values and check them against the schematic. So it's correct. So the fact that the horizontal frequency is really wrong, I'm wondering if because all the resistors on this board were so out of tolerance that people just kept adjusting the horizontal controls until it kind of sort of worked. And it could be that now that everything's snapped back into place, the horizontal uh, oscillator and frequency control is just so far out because somebody had been tweaking on it. So the thing to do is to pop this in and see if we can get our horizontal frequency back in line. Hopefully that's all it is. All right, let's try this again. We can see that that's all wrong. There we go, get somewhere with it. Nope, breaking up again. There we go. Look at how weird that is. Yeah, so we get wrong horizontal frequency. They didn't like that. <laughs> so, uh, I may have actually heard it. We'll find out in a moment. But... It's strange because everything I looked at per the schematic looked good, but obviously it wasn't. So we need to check something else. So I popped the main fuse, the 3 amp fuse. As you can see, it's pretty blackened. Also, the uh, thermistor, uh, which was RT1 there, you can see a nice fresh part. Uh, was also way up in value and when I took it out it crumbled so I don't know if I caused that or if that was the cause of the horizontal failure really don't know uh, here's the uh, thermistor and I get the FS 1222 uh, as a cross reference to the original SAMS part listed which is that 1472350-11 number. 
I punched that number into Google and I had to go through a couple of pages before finding Talon Electronics, which had the, uh, the Workman thermistor listed as a uh, cross-reference part from that. Now this says 1,000 ohms cold and the replacement is 1.4K cold. Uh, but after talking to them, uh, I talked to an older gentleman who uh, said that these used to go bad on RCA sets and that this was an appropriate replacement, so I'm going to take his word for it. And for shits and giggles, I pulled the horizontal output transistor, which in this is actually germanium. Yeah, this is made in 74, and they were using a germanium output transistor. And that's Q101, which... Could either be a GE25, a TR27, etc. Well, I went ahead and ordered an SK3035 because it was the the least expensive option uh, for what's available out there. The ECG127 is about 40 bucks, and the GE parts and stuff are a little bit harder to find. So the SK thing I got, and you can see they lit they listed here. Uh, as a germanium transistor for TV horizontal output stages. And then you're supposed to use an SK3113 as the damper diode. So I have to check that too and make sure that didn't short. But you see here it's a 220 volt, uh, 32 watt, 10 amp at 2.5 megahertz. Uh, and it's supposed to have a drop across it of about 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 volts roughly and when I took the old one out it didn't really pass the junction test and I'll show you and so if we take the original device which is PNP and we go between our base and collector see how it goes way down it keeps dropping the base emitter junction that's about normal so the base collector junction is kind of messed up on this one the replacement, the base collector junction is pretty happy, 0.12 and 0.15. So this this is in better shape. And I don't know, I have to check the gain on this too. We should do that real quick and see what that looks like. But uh, And then i got to check the damper diode. So here's the old device. So that has a beta of 4. That's not very good. And they say it has a voltage drop of 0.2 across it, so that's not looking too good for this guy. Let's compare that to the new one. And it could be that the new parts raise the voltage enough to hurt the transistor. Because everything was just so far off. And of course, this one's not going to register. Three diodes, it says. This doesn't do a very good job of testing germaniums, really. Let's try it once more here, just for grins and giggles. The fact that it takes so long basically says it doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, three diodes. So, I have another component identifier. Let's try this one instead. Yeah, the other one says the same thing. I have an Atlas DCA uh, tester, which is more reliable somewhere, but the screen went bad on it, so I have to find a replacement LCD. Anyways, so, yeah, not really sure uh, where we're going to go with this. Let's check the damper diode and make sure it didn't short. And there's our damper diode there. Yep. That still checks 0.45 volts across its silicon diode. So that's still happy. Uh, so really, I guess it's just a matter of popping a fuse in it, putting the new horizontal output transistor in, and then uh, putting the horizontal driver card back in. I'm going to check all of my resistor values again and see if they're okay, and then we'll fire it up again. All right, well, I've checked and rechecked everything and made sure there was no bridges, checked all my resistor and cap values, checked to make sure there are no shorts, uh, traced everything out, even reflowed the uh, connector pins at the bottom here, installed my 
replacement horizontal output transistor. So, uh, yeah. We're going to pop a fuse in it, see what happens. All right, so, hold on, let me get rid of the wind noise. Okay. So it's been sitting here on standby for a bit, get the CRT warmed up so we can see or not see a picture. And I've got some dim bulb action back here so that hopefully we don't blow it up again. Oh, that's a good sign. So I guess either one of two things happened. Either the thermistor failed and it was getting insufficient drive and it was causing the the uh, horizontal to overconduct kill itself or the horizontal output failed and it blew up the thermistor but it's working I'm still seeing some bad linearity here we'll confirm that in a second of course it could also be that I'm on the dim bulb tester too I'm gonna go ahead and bypass the dim bulb and see if I can blow it up then See what she does now. All right, still good. Yeah, still a little bit squished on the right hand side, just a little bit. But given the hassle I've gone through so far, and the fact that I have vertical deflection, I think I'm gonna just leave this one be. Yeah, it's a little bit imperfect, but I have proper sweep. It's not under scanned. The vertical linearity is even a little bit stretched, actually. We do need to tilt the yoke a bit. See if we can get that loose and change that. We've got that little bitty bolt back there. Oh, it's got a flat head in it. Let's uh, loosen it. All right, so I'm going to attempt to tilt the yoke. There we go. Got to get it loose off the neck there. Have a seat and take a look at that. That's about right. Maybe a little bit counterclockwise, like just a smidgen. Or that could just be a yoke defect over there, too. Because this looks a little bit slanty. Doesn't help if the camera's blanking, it's hard to see. Let me just, uh, we can mctorculate this just a tiniest little bit. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's tighten this thing up, and then we'll get a TV, a regular TV signal into it and see how it looks. Okay, so we still got a little bit of vertical overscan. And bear with me here while I try to readjust that. All right, and the reason why we got overscan on the width is because of the digital 4x3 zoom thing. And the camera's blanking on that, so it looks dim, but it's actually a pretty bright picture. It's got that nice CRT in it. Let's see if I can actually pick up anything other than Mexican stations. see if I zoom in on it it fills the 4x3 screen I've got a little bit of underscan at the bottom here I'm going to increase that just a little bit more and the pots are kind of touchy on this there's a video bias what does this do oh that's just a sharpness control okay and then we got vertical hold yeah that locks in pretty well and if we tune off the station, we're still upright, so the horizontal's locked in really good. Okay. So, uh, wow, this one was a pain, wasn't it? I mean, gee, my knee. We had the power supply issues, and then we had the uh, horizontal blow up on us, which we now got working again. And I still don't know that if that's my cause, like, when we were going over the board, did I miss the fact that the thermistor was charred and about ready to fail? Because the thermistor controls the drive to the horizontal output. So if that goes open, 
uh, there's no drive and that can cause the horizontal to overconduct and, and pop the fuse which could also have been why we had very funky uh, waveforms because the screen was just gobbledygook but anyways it's working let's clean it up and put it back together uh, let's first check and make sure we have adequate sound here's as though we do fine tuning works Okay, so let's put this guy back together and clean him up. Well, here it is all cleaned up. Could definitely use some uh, fake weather conditioner or whatever on the, the covering, but the case and everything cleaned up very nicely. Just a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of effort. This has a ID number carved in on it, like many stuff did in the 70s, because they told us to, and they said, oh, look, if it ever gets stolen, this will make it easier to track down. But did it? Mm, not really. But I decided not to try to disable the instant on just because uh, it's a little trickier. I get a lot of interference in this part of the shop. I don't know why. Even if I switch between three and four, it's still kind of crappy. I think I might swap the coax and try again, but. It's only happened recently after they were dicking with the cell tower across the street. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this little series. I'm glad we resurrected this little trash pick. It's a cool little TV. Runs on 12 volts. whoop de doo and It's got a nice bright picture, which is why my camera keeps blinking. So I can't really deal with that too much. Changing the aperture helps a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, see, there it goes again. Anyways... Thanks for watching the videos, guys. More stuff to come. Just when you thought we were done with this thing. You get normal sound, but you also get this obnoxious garbage. squealing not a loose connection hmm so it looks like we're gonna have a part five on this thing we're having intermittent sound crashing and squealing all right kids stay tuned for part five